there was a video that was made in the past and it talked about why black men don't go to church and unfortunately the person that I was speaking to in the video has now passed on from what I understand but today someone made a comment and the comment reads as follow the black church is a place where feminism has crept in and put the woman above or in competition with her man and the only man she will submit to is the pastor and he uses that power to control households over the woman's husband and it puts and it's out of order it's like Jezebel and Ahab and a power struggle to control the mind and will of black men now my response to that comment was that's because the male refused to go to church and has sent their women alone so black men fed their wives to the wolf preacher now that may upset a lot of men because of course you should be able to send your wife to church or anywhere to the supermarket or what have you and she should be faithful to you she should be loyal to you but when black men judge their wives or their women and point fingers at what black women do and how black women go to church alone because I know from attending church we see in the church there's mostly women and a lot of times these women go to church to try to find some type of spiritual or emotional relief from the stress and the abuse either verbally psychologically spiritually and even physical that they get from home that's a way of escape and a lot of times in church you can hear the hurt and the pain of a lot of women not saying that women are always the good person and the man is the bad guy I'm not saying that I'm not saying that these women are perfect or angels but I've heard so many cries of women and sometimes it's hard to decipher whether it's tears of joy or tears of pain because of what they have to deal with in their households. So I want to say to these brothers that feel the same way that this individual feels that if you're insecure if you are not a teacher or a leader in your own home if you're unfaithful or have been unfaithful not taking care of home because there's a lot of women that go to church hungry they're hungry for attention they're hungry for compliments they're hungry for love and then you have quite a few women that's hungry for sex because they don't get that or those things at home because his attention is focused elsewhere now I shared a story one time of this guy that came in my store it was around Valentine's Day and he was married he had a wife at home and she wasn't a bad looking woman and just because a woman looks good that don't mean that she's a virtuous woman 
It don't mean that she's loyal or faithful. But she enjoyed reading books. So he came and he bought gifts for at least, if I'm not mistaken, it was three or four women. He was buying gifts for each of these women. But for his wife, he came and bought about eight or nine books by black authors. You know, True to the Game, you know, and all those books like that. And he was saying this should keep her busy. Now he bought these books for his wife to keep her mind occupied because her mind was in those unrealistic stories in those books. And I guess she wasn't really paying attention to what he was doing or maybe she didn't really care about what he was doing because she was lost in her books. So he bought her those books to keep her busy while he's out in the street doing his thing. And I guess in his own mind, he felt he was a player. So he felt as long as I keep her mind occupied, she's not concerned about what I do out in the street with his multiple women. But that's the kind of guy that would judge the preacher. That's the kind of guy that would make statements like the person made on that video regarding the black church and how black men don't have control over their women and then how the preacher have more control over their wives. Now, if you were taking care of business at home, if you were the teacher at home, if you were the leader at home, if, you're, if, if the preacher made a move on your wife or any man for that matter, your wife or your girl would be loyal enough to come and let you know. She will let you know what's going on. But if she's hungry, if you send the church, if you send your wife to church hungry by herself, well, the only teacher now she have, the only light she have, is that preacher. And I'm not saying that all preachers are wolves. They're not. But there are wolves. The Bible talk about how uh, the wolves in sheep clothing. So, you send your wife to church hungry because... You're too busy hanging on the block or with your boys or with your other women. And so your wife goes to church alone and she would ask you, she would invite you to come to church. But you like, nah, I don't trust the preacher and they want my money and they this and they that and I don't trust that in Christianity and the Bible and God. So she goes. She goes by herself. So the only light she sees, the only teacher she sees, and I'm going to tell you, brother, something. Women, whether they realize it or not, attracted, attracted to spiritual energy. Even the most wickedest woman is attracted to spiritual energy. So if you are a teacher and you're given right knowledge and this dude's out there that's charismatic with the wrong knowledge and women are dropping their draws for them just look at the brothers on youtube that's got a lot of youtube followers and if you look at their followers and the people that comment and donate to their channel they're mostly women so a lot of youtubers have become like the wolves in sheep clothing like the preachers they talk about in churches because now you have a big following a lot of women following and donating their money to you and you have brothers that would actually meet women offline have sex with them one in particular in mind this one youtuber got pregnant by a youtuber so 
women are attracted to light whether you want to accept that or not so if you got a brother that seemed like he got himself together and he's spitting some true knowledge and he's getting attention from people he's got the attention of people and they're listening to him women find that attractive that's like an aphrodisiac to a woman that's that's like viagra right and if you if you're if you're if your talk game, that's not the term I want to use, but if your rap game is in order, man, if you know how to talk to these women, it's not hard, man, to get them to get with you. So if you're sending your wife or your girl to church by herself and you're not taking care of business at home, then you can't get mad if she's in awe, and I'm going to tell you something, when, when those preachers are up there teaching or preaching, and they're scanning the, the congregation, they can see the expressions on the faces of every member in there. They can see, especially if he has spiritual discernment, he can see the spirit on these women, and he know the ones that are looking at him like they want to just eat him up. And a lot of those women are the ones that will come in and say, Pastor, I need to talk to you about something. And so she goes to the pastor and tell the pastor about how you're coming in late. How she finding lipstick on your collar. How she went through your text messages and found messages that you messaged to other women or vice versa so she's talking to the pastor about you and about how lonely she is guess what that's doing that is opening a door for that pastor to make a move on her because a lot of times when women go to these pastors they're not going to them because they really need spiritual guidance they're going to him because that's their way of getting close to him. Being able to sit down and dialogue and then they start shedding tears. Just like they do in paternity court when they know they're wrong. She start shedding her tears and then he's like, don't cry, sister. And he hand her a box of Kleenex and, you know, he consoled her and hug her. And next thing you know, she's kissing on his neck. You know, oh, I'm sorry, pastor. I got carried away. You know, her emotions got in the way because women are, em are more emotional. Men are more visual. So when that pastor, if he's got a good gift of gab, he know how to talk your woman right out of her drawers. He's already getting her money and she gives it freely. Whenever that orphan pan goes around, she's putting $100, $200 in there. She's writing these checks, putting cash in there. And whenever it's time for the church to go out of town, she's right there. Every time the church is visiting another church, that wife is right there. And she would sit right in the front seat and she would have the loudest amen now. Amen, pastor. Clap her the hands. You don't think that pastor see that? You don't think he hear that? You being a player, you don't think he feel that energy? He does. Now, all he need to do is act on it. And when he act on it, this image that you see on the screen would be your wife in the grips of the wolf. I like that title, in the grips of the wolf. That would be your wife. And now when your wife come home and you wondering why she's now going to bed in pajama top, pajama pants, she's all covered up. Whereas before, she sleep in the bed naked. She's wearing lingerie to entice you, but your attention is elsewhere. So now she's covering up everything. She's covering up because somebody else has taken over her body. Somebody else 
has control over her mind, soul, and body. Somebody else is satisfying her. It may not be sexual yet, but in her mind, in her reality, she's already in a relationship with that pastor, with that wolf or what you perceive as a wolf in sheep clothing, the same wolf that you fed your wife to, you fed your woman to that wolf. So now you wanna talk about how the preacher is controlling your household where the preacher's telling the wife now, well, you know, sister, um, the Bible says, and he will throw in a couple of Bible verses and get her mind to thinking. And then he'll say, and if he really wanna know who you are, he'll say like, well, you know, talk to your husband and see if he's willing to sit down for counseling. Bring him in here. See, that's to rock her to sleep, rock you to sleep because well, he wants you to come. He's inviting you, so he's not hiding nothing. So if you decide to come to counseling and you sitting before this man, now he's listening to both sides. Now, because what happens is when you get that wife and that husband together, right? Things start coming out in counseling sessions. She lets him know how she feels. And then his emotion gets in the way and he lets her know. And sometimes they start arguing. So now the pastor really knows now how strong your relationship is, right? And then you get mad and feel, okay, I don't need to be sitting and talking in front of no man. I ain't going to counsel no more. And then you move on and go about your business. You stop going to counseling. Next thing you know, she's calling the pastor at night. Pastor, I need to talk. And one thing leads to another. So you're sending your wife to church alone, hungry for love and attention. And now you have what you perceive as a wolf in sheep clothing, giving your wife the attention that you're not giving her. He may even buy her a little roll, something real small. Sister, I thought about you and I thought this might brighten your day. Thank you, pastor. Now she's flattered because now she's getting attention. Or he may compliment her. Sister, every time I see you, you look so radiant. God is really blessing you. He's really working with you. I can see the glow. You have that, you, you, you dress, you should be the next top model. Oh, thank you, pastor. Because that's something that she's not getting at home. So the wolf start looking good to her and becomes her teacher in every sense of the matter. So brothers that think like this comment, now if you got a good woman, she's gonna come home and tell you about that wolf. And I shared a story before about my son's mom and she went to church and um, actually we went to the same church together but she noticed that this one pastor was watching her and he, he'd say something to her. And I mentioned this in the video of the past and he'd always gotta say something. He'd never say nothing when I'm around. You always wanna comment on the baby. Oh, the baby, let me hold the baby. Oh, the baby's so cute, you know? And then when I come around, he's all right, see you later, sister. He moves on. All right, see you later, sister Tulu. See you later, sister, you know, he moves on, right? So he moved on about his business, right? And when she told me about what was going on, I'm like, okay. And I confronted them. There was a couple of preachers I, I confronted in my life because they were doing some sneak stuff. So, you know, but if you have a good woman, you don't have to worry. She can go anywhere. She can go out of town by herself. She go out of town by herself and you didn't have to worry about nothing. You know, she get with the church women and go go to conferences or whatever. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. You ain't gotta be insecure about that because you know, you know. And if she happens to cheat on you because of the fact you have that connection and you have not blind yourself to that. Now that's another thing too, because you have dudes that may have a connection 
and they also blind themselves to the point that she could do these things because he think his game is so tight and that she's so loving and kind and uh, 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 committed, you know, or loyal that she ain't going to do it. And she's doing it just because she can. But then there's those brothers that, that, that have their game so tight that they are aware. They have not forgotten that she's a woman and that she's human and that she's subject to error. They forget that. And the ones that don't forget it will have discussions and conversations with this girl. What if type of scenarios? And in that, a message is always put forth. So she know exactly where he's coming from and she know exactly where he's coming from. And he's not afraid to let her know that look, I'm not holding you here against your will. If you feel that you're not happy, if your eyes are focused or set on someone else, the door is always open. You ain't got to be here with me, right? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just letting you know. You ain't got to be here. The door is open. You freely to go. There ain't going to be no begging. Baby, I really want you to stay, you know, but. No, nah, the door is open. I just move on with my life, you know? Yeah, I love you. But at the same time, I'm not going to be no fool for love either. You know, I'm not going to get myself in a, a, a situation where I'm going to end up hurting somebody or end up in prison for the rest of my life or someone trying to hurt me. That's not going to happen. For somebody that's going to go out and cheat anyway. So you let once they know straight up that, hey, I can do with or without you. Yeah, I love you, but I can do with or without you. Once they understand where you're coming from, and if you are a good man and you're taking care of home, I'm not just talking about financial. If you're making things, if you're making lightning and thunder, if you're making a thunder roar in, in the bedroom, you know, and you, you know, taking her to, 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 to the ninth heaven or 12th heaven or, you know, 120th heaven, you know, and you seeing, she's seeing angels and, and light and, you know, sparkles and everything, and toes curling and popping at the same time, you know, and so you're not, you're not only, you're not only satisfying her sexually, but you are, you taking care of home. It's not always about sex. It's not always about money. There has to be a balance in the relationship. And if you know if that balance is there and you taking her home, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about anything. And because a disloyal person is going to be disloyal, regardless of what they have. Regardless of what you do, you cannot maintain a disloyal person because they are who they are. It's a she-wolf. Everybody likes to talk about the wolf, the man being a wolf, but there's a lot of she-wolves out there. And the same thing applies for guys that get involved with she-wolves. You know, good dudes out there that striving to do the right thing. But then he have this she-wolf. You know, and there's a lot of guys in church too. And the wife decide she don't want to go. Right? And then there's a she-wolf in church that see him in church all by himself. And would say, that's a good man right there. He's a godly man. He's a spiritual man. That's a good man. And next thing you know, he's not coming home. Right? So feedback. Tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm fearless.